Right. So in the previous video, uh, we spoke about the importance of estimation and planning and where it can be useful. Uh, you can again find the link uh, for the video in uh, the top right corner of this video. Now let's go into a little more detail about agile estimation. Basically, we need to uh, we need need to answer one question, which is how big is it and cool, right? So again, asking again, how how big is it? So how would you answer that, right? Like there is a poodle in front of us, but how do we know how big it is? We will probably not be able to answer this, uh, just saying how, how big it is, unless in comparison to other dogs. So, so now you can say that, okay, a uh, poodle is probably medium sized. Uh, a German shepherd is, is slightly larger than, uh, than a poodle. A Great Dane is, is even larger. So, so, so basically this puts a thing into perspective uh, where, where now you can give an answer of, okay, relative to a German Shepherd, a poodle is, is smaller, but relative to a Chihuahua, uh, a poodle is, is bigger. Uh, let's take another example where, uh, where if I were to ask you, how big is uh, a Thai P101, right? Again, you will probably be able to answer in height, but that height will mean nothing to me unless I know whether that height is like, is, is, is that a good height? Is that a bad height? Is, is that short? Is that tall? But now I can answer that question, right? Uh, compared to Burj Khalifa, it is extremely uh, short, but uh, it is probably taller than uh, the Shanghai World Financial Center and probably much taller than my house. So the point is that it is, uh, very tall because it is the ninth tallest building in, in the world. Um, but but that uh, we can only answer that question after we, put, after we put things in perspective. So the only thing that we are trying to answer is while with agile estimation, we cannot answer the question of how big a story is unless and until it is relative to other stories. Yep. And I, I there are a couple of reasons why, you know, relative estimation tends to be quite popular uh, with agile teams. One of them is, as you said, Richard, it's very difficult for people to answer with absolute numbers, even with very common things, right? A dog is a really common animal. And yet, if you were to ask people what the height of a specific species of dog is, then of course struggle to give you the exact height in centimeters. But if you ask them relatively, they'll be able to give you that answer. And that's the same when you start getting into complex domains like software development. The other part of it is that in Agile, we tend to separate speed and size. Uh, whereas in you know, more traditional kind of estimation, we conflate those two aspects. Uh, and so in Agile, there is the notion of size, and then there is the notion of velocity, and relative sizing allows you to do that. Yeah. So uh, there's, there's multiple ways of doing estimation, and one way of going and doing estimation is uh, coarse-grained estimation, wherein you assign a t-shirt size to your estimate, and you say, hey, my estimate is either an extra small uh, my story is either extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. You could probably have an extra, extra large. Um, and that's usually something that we will do when we have our first backlog, uh, like our first list of stories, just so that we can determine what range of uh, stories we have in terms of sizing. If there are some which are very big, which probably need to get split, and some which are very small, which need to get combined, so that we can also eventually come and determine which is essentially the smallest developable, developable story in our backlog so that we can start assigning some more discrete values to it. Once we've uh, arrived at that final t-shirt size kind of backlog, we start assigning what we call story points to it. And story points uh, are very, very, uh, uh, you know, subjective kind of numbers. Uh, the size of one point across projects can, uh, can vary. But what's important to remember is that they're relative. Uh, a three-point story is 3x a one-point story. And that's just what you need to remember off, off the top of your head. Now, does it need to be exactly 3.000? And can it not be 3.013567? I'm just making that number up. It can be. It's roughly 3x a one-point story. And a five-point story is roughly 5x 
a one point story yeah and the key point that's all you need to remember is that the one point story can actually be different across different teams like the definition of one point is, is not a standard definition it can it can vary significantly exactly now uh, one of the ways uh, agile teams do uh, relative sizing is using planning poker and uh, i'll i'll describe the process of planning poker shortly uh, but what you'll notice is that the variation across numbers is quite high as you get bigger so you'll notice that there is 0 1 2 and 3 but after 3 you start pretty much going into you know fibonacci numbers to a certain extent so you go from 3 to 5 and then 5 to 8 and 8 to 13 and again the reason for this is the bigger something gets the more difficult it is for us to estimate its size accurately and that is why you know if you look at fibonacci series or planning poker cards they tend to build that risk into the whole uh, estimation process so let me talk you through how uh, you know the, the standard pattern of how you would estimate a story and then richa can tell us why that's probably a bit too elaborate and you can go with a much simpler pattern I've so yeah the first thing sorry or why i've changed my seat <laughs> <laughs> or why she's changed your, uh, her sheet uh, her seat and you know the cheat sheet to being a ba um so the first thing is that the ba will read out the story right you tell people what the story is about and what's the scope of the story if you know anything about the acceptance criteria at the time uh next the devs after hearing the story will throw an estimate how do you throw an estimate you either have your planning poker cards with you and you display that card or you just throw a number with your with your fingers and everyone throws together um now you could see that everyone throws the same number in which case congratulations you've got your estimate because everyone agrees but if everyone doesn't agree and there is variation and probably huge variation one person saying it's a one pointer the other person saying it's a five pointer and there's somebody in between who's saying it's a three pointer if there are there are those variations then it's well worth a discussion discuss why the variations exist and then throw again and you do this till the time you are able to get some sort of consensus and once you reach consensus you take notes note the estimate and you move on ideally you should be going through this process really quickly if you're spending any more than 4 to 5 minutes per story you're getting into a territory where the you know the whole exercise of estimation isn't giving you enough value right because you're not going to be doing one story at at a time you're probably going to be lining up a bunch of stories uh and if you've got to go through a whole host of stories and spend like 15 minutes 20 minutes per story after some time you're really going to hate the exercise so right. tell yourself that this should not be more than 4 minutes per story and now now richa you can tell them the whole time saving trick and then if you really think about it even 4 minutes per story if you have about um if you have about like 30 stories in your backlog which is rarely the case uh it it actually is about uh 150 minutes which is a really really long time uh for to get the estimates on your story so uh the key point to remember it's is that it's all relative and it is ultimately an estimate so if estimate by definition means that uh, that is an estimate for what i feel right now and it can it can change in the future yeah and and again by by using techniques like fibonacci series or planning poker uh the the values on the cards or the fibonacci series of numbers they themselves will give you some amount of uh risk management in the whole uh you know estimate so don't get so tied up about the the precision of the estimates uh right so i am just going to probably tell you what what this is so i have an s over here which is basically uh, small um uh, then i have an m which is medium and and there is 
n, which basically is each large. So I have put these stickies, just assume that there are three buckets of, uh, of stories in our uh, backlog. And as you can see, like the first thing is just to probably spread all the cards across the tables and, and ask the devs, can you identify the smallest story amongst these? Right. So let's say if these were not bucketed uh, and, and a dev pick, okay, this story is the smallest. I would just put it in, in, in the S bucket. Now for all the other buckets, I would probably, I would just ask the question, uh, is this story double the size of S? or is it uh, triple the size uh, of S or, or how, how big do you think this is relative to this? And then as and as when the devs start putting stories, you could see that like multiple devs can just like move stories around and put them into buckets. And they will ask questions only and only if uh, they have any anything to clarify. So you're not discussing every story by default, but you're only discussing stories where there is a confusion and you have to challenge an assumption or clarify a certain story. And honestly, even when there is a backlog of 100 stories, I have finished this exercise in like 30 minutes and it, and it works really well. Uh, you could also do this. Uh, this is basically when uh, a project is starting new where your S, M and buckets are, are very easy uh, for us to, because of the t-shirt sizes, it's very easy for us to uh, size them relatively. But ultimately for calculation, we need to assign points to them. So if M was double the size of S and L was double the size of M, I would bucket them as one, two, and four. If the project is already in flight mode and you know what a one pointer is, what a three pointer is, and what a five pointer is, you could also just uh, do the same exercise by with points where I have one, three, and, and five points. Uh, and, and people could do the same exercise of moving the cards very quickly uh, in, a, in a very time efficient uh, manner. Uh, and that kind of an exercise basically encourages relative sizing because when we're doing planning poker, we're discussing one card at a time. Um, and that relative card is not in front of us. Here all the cards are in front of us and we can just move everything all along. Excellent demonstration, Kritcha. All right, so after that excellent demonstration, I'm going to continue with the rest of the lesson. So that was the time-saving trick. Um, Richard, you want to talk about uh, spikes? Right. So spikes are basically, sometimes we're just not able to estimate a story because we don't know enough about it. Uh, and, and we have some uh, questions about feasibility of a particular story. Uh, in that case, we introduce something known as spike. And we assume that if we knew if the feasibility was not an issue, how big this would be. And the idea of a spike is basically to uncover unknown information. So if I had two ways of implementing something and I had to pick one of them, and I'm not sure which one would, would work best. Uh, for the purpose of the story, I would say it, uh, it you know, uh, I, I can estimate the story, but Spike, I will just time box it to, to number of days because it is not uh, estimable. And uh, I will just say um, one day and we have to get an answer and how much ever we can explore in that one day, it's fine because there is no way to estimate a spike, right? Because we don't know what is the outcome. So the only way for us to contain the spikes so that we don't go into like a PhD research mode is, uh, is by time boxing it. Right, and again, one thing to remember is that we want to be accurate, but we don't want to be precise. So, and that is the right kind of balance between um, how much time you spend in estimating the story. Because if you remember, our, our major goal is to unearth value and not to be absolutely precise about uh, when what is going to happen. Because honestly, there is very limited information that you have uh, before uh, you you actually jump into the development mode. Yeah, and that's why, you know, when you start getting into relative sizing, right, uh, this is where you start to get good as a facilitator. 
is it uh, is your story bigger than a one point uh, well is it a three pointer then is it bigger than a three point is it a five pointer is it bigger than a five point then is it an eight pointer no 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 it's not as big as uh, an eight pointer then is it a five pointer uh, yeah it's not like it's somewhere between five and eight but it's not as big as to be an eight so let's just assign it a five just that's that's how quick your decision needs to be don't go there thinking oh is this a 4.5 or, or is this a 5.7 i mean that just is not valuable uh so pick one of those numbers move on uh because those numbers will start helping you embody some risks yeah absolutely all right so that should help you get a sense of what we do with sizing in the next video we will talk